It's story time, story time, story time. Come on over, sit right down, it's story time. It's story time, it's story time, it's story time. Come on over, sit right down, it's story time. One, two, three, freeze. Look, listen. Today's story is Los Tres Pequeños Jabalíes or The Three Little Javalinas written by Susan Lowell, escrito por Susan Lowell and ilustrado por, illustrated by Jim Harris. And this book, if you cannot already tell, is written both in Spanish and in English. It actually has the blurb on the back in both. Now, I don't quite speak enough Spanish to read the whole thing in Spanish, but I can read the translation version in English. It says, at last, this all-time favorite is available in a bilingual edition with Spanish and English text. Read again about how these lovable, wild, southwestern cousins of the three little pigs outsmart trickster coyote. But this time, read it in a way that truly reflects the diversity of the American Southwest. And we can see some of the images on the back cover and the front cover. They're kind of uh, out in the desert in this story. Los Tres Pequeños Javaliers, The Three Little Javelinas. Written by Susan Lowell and illustrated by Jim Harris. Oh, this tells a little bit more about the book. This is a Southwestern adaptation of a familiar folk tale, a chili flavored Three Little Pigs. And it says that javelinas, the animal in this story, are new world relatives of swine, but not true pigs that you can found in southwestern United States and South America. They are very hairy on their chinny chin chins and also related to the hippopotamus. Let's see what happens. Once upon a time. Way out in the desert, there were three little javelinas. Javelinas are wild, hairy, southwestern cousins of pigs. Their heads were hairy, their backs were hairy, and their bony legs all the way down to their hooves were hairy, but their snouts were soft and pink. One day, the three little javelinas trotted away to seek their fortunes. Soon, the little javelinas came to a spot where the path divided, and each one went a different way. Well, it looks like they're building houses. Let's see what they use in this book. The first little javelina wandered lazily along, he didn't even see a dust storm whirling across the desert until it caught him. The whirlwind blew away and left the first little javelina sitting in a heap of tumbleweeds. Brushing himself off, he said, I'll build a house with them. And in no time at all, he did. Then along came a coyote. Ah, which part is the coyote playing in this story? Yes, I think he's the part of the wolf. He ran through the desert so quickly and so quietly that he was almost invisible. In fact, this was only one of Coyote's many magical tricks. He laughed when he saw the tumbleweed house and smelled the javelina inside. Mmm. A tender, juicy piggy, he thought. Coyote was tired of eating mice and rabbits. He called out sweetly, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. 
Habali, Milindo Habali, Dehame Entrar. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, shouted the first Havalina, who had a lot of hair on his chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, said Coyote. And tonces voy a soplar y resoplar y tu casa derumbar, dijo Coyote. And there it goes. And he huffed, and he puffed. Y Coyote sopló y resboló y la casa de arbustos rodantes derumbó. He huffed and he puffed and he blew the little tumbleweed house away. But in all the hullabaloo, the first little javelina escaped and went looking for his brother and sister. Coyote, who was very sneaky, tiptoed along behind. The second little javelina walked for miles along giant cactus plants called saguaros. They held their ripe red fruit high in the sky, but they made almost no shade, and the little javelina grew hot. Then he came upon a Native American woman who was gathering sticks from inside a dried up cactus. She planned to use these long sticks, called saguaro ribs, to knock down the sweet cactus fruit. The second little javelina said, Please, may I have some sticks to build a house? Yes, said the woman. When he was finished building his house, he lay down in the shade. Then his brother arrived, panting from the heat, and the second little javelina moved over and made a place for him. Pretty soon, Coyote found the saguaro rib house. He used his magic to make his voice sound just like another javelina's. Little pig, little pig, let me come in, he called. Habali, mi lindo javali, déjame entrar, dijo Coyote. But the little javelinas were suspicious. The second one cried, no, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. No, ni por las cerdas de mi bar, bar, barbilla. Bah, thought Coyote. I am not going to eat your hair. Then Coyote smiled, showing all his sharp teeth. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. Voy a soplar y resoplar y tu casa de rumbar. So he huffed and he puffed and all the saguaro ribs came tumbling down. But the two little javelinas escaped into the desert. Still not discouraged, Coyote followed. Sometimes his magic did fail, but then he usually came up with another trick. And there's the trickster Coyote right there watching the javelinas run away. Oh, here's the third javelina. Let's see what she used to build her house. Looks like some sort of stone. The third little javelina trotted through beautiful Palo Verde trees with green trunks and yellow flowers. She saw a snake sliding by smooth as oil. A hawk floated round and around above her. Then she came to a place where a man was making adobe bricks from mud and straw. The bricks lay on the ground baking in the hot, hot sun. The third little javelina thought for a moment and said, may I please have a few adobes to build a house? Si, sí, answered the man, which means yes in Spanish. So the third javelina built herself a solid little adobe house, cool in summer, warm in winter. When her brothers found her, she welcomed them in and locked the door behind them. Coyote followed their trail. 
Little pig, little pig, let me come in, he called. The three little javelinas looked out the window. This time, Coyote pretended to be very old and weak, with no teeth and a sore paw. But they were not fooled. No, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin, called back the third little javelina. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, said Coyote. And tonces voy a soplar, iré soplar, y tu casa de rumbar, dijo Coyote. He grinned, thinking of the wild pig dinner to come. Just try it. Pues prueba, shouted the third little javelina. So Coyote huffed and puffed, but the adobe bricks did not budge. Again, Coyote tried. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in. Voy a soplar, y re soplar, y tu casa de rumbar. The three little javelinas covered their hairy ears, but nothing happened. The javelinas peeked out the window. Oh, let's see how this story solves the problem in the end. Looks like a chimney to me. The tip of Coyote's raggedy tail whisked right past their noses. He was climbing up the tin roof. Next, Coyote used his magic to make himself very skinny. <gasps> the stovepipe, gasped the third little javelina. Quickly, she lighted a fire inside her wood stove. What a feast it will be, Coyote said to himself. He squeezed into the stovepipe. I think I will eat them with red hot chili sauce. Whoosh! Sizzle! Then the three little javelinas heard an amazing noise. It was not a bark. It was not a cackle. It was not a howl or a scream. It was all of the sounds together. Yip, 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 yow! And away ran a puff of smoke shaped like a coyote. The three little javelinas lived happily ever after in the adobe house. And if you ever hear a coyote's voice way out in the desert at night, Yip, 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 yow! Well, you know what he's remembering. And that is the end. Oh, I didn't realize they had this in this book, but they have about the author, Sobre la Autora, Susan Lowell. Susan Lowell spends part of her time in Tucson, Arizona, which is part of the American Southwest, so she is maybe very familiar with the deserts out there, and part of it on a ranch in the desert where she is able to watch javelinas and coyotes from her windows. And about the illustrator, Jim Harris lives with his wife, Marion, and their three children at the end of a dirt road near Mesa, Colorado. He has been a professional illustrator since 1981. And that is the very end.